And here we are on Morton Island. We scored ourselves with a fantastic waterfront campsite on the west coast. So we came to Morton for a well-deserved vacation, of course, but also for a trial run before our trip to Cape York in October. So obviously we have made some uh, modification to the car, prepared the car for the trip. Uh, so not only mechanically, but also, you know, to make it a little bit more comfortable for us uh, where, while we are on the road for a month. So let's first uh, speak about the mechanics and let's uh, see what Keith has to say here. Hello, darling. Morning, all. The so it's a Toyota Hilux? Hilux SR5. 2011? 2011 registered, 2010 built. We built a tough tourer, basically. Um, we're carrying 3.3 .3 tonne when we're fully loaded. When we first got the canopy on, I'd done nothing to the car other than bull bar and uh, suspension. And we went on a few trips. The car was getting very hot. Didn't like being in sand. It was struggling. The transmission oil temperatures were going right up too hot and we were having to pull over and stop. So we've put the front mounted intercooler and an oil cooler in for the transmission. Those two things alone made a huge difference to temperatures. They dropped the temperatures 15, 20 degrees, no bother. However, the cooling system, it was the original. And so 11 years old, nothing ever changed on it. So we've changed the water pump, the fan, the radiator, all the pipe work, thermostat. And that this is made... quite a larger fan as well, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's about a centimetre wider. So you're increasing your sucking power by about 20-30% uh, easily, mm. which again makes a big difference to the temperatures. This trip, we've blasted it in high range, in very soft sand, and the highest temperature I've got out of the transmission was 90 degrees, and out of the um, cooling system was 87, where before she'd have been up to 100. So that's made a really huge difference. We've replaced the injectors. As preventative, really, they're not really due until 150,000. We changed them at about 135,000. On the fuel system, we put a pre-line um, filter in um, with an electronic warning light inside the cab. So if we do get any water in, as it goes into the first filter, it'll tell me and we need to get pulled over and either change the filter and drain it and see if that makes any difference, but it should be okay. Um, put a sentry battery in it, just an orange blue top, and it is fantastic compared to other batteries I've had. Um, we've put in a uh, catch can, just to try and keep the engine a little bit cleaner. To be honest, the engine's running so clean now I can just get any oil through it all into the catch cam. Only have to empty it about once every 10,000 k's um, and I get about oh, 50 mil, 50 mil of oil or something like that, very little. We tuned the engine just to get a little bit more torque out of it. Um, I think we've got 450 newton meters of torque. It could have gone up to about 480 but I pulled it back a bit. I wanted, didn't want it to be too much stress on the engine. Full set of breathers to diff, gearbox, transmission, etc. And they all come up through that. It's an ARB system, so it comes through, and it has a filter on there as well. So it can't suck any dirt in, even if it does suck. So we've got here as well a relay and switch, uh, sorry, a fuse uh, that is connected to the camper. So yeah, the, through an Anderson plug at the exactly, back of the tray there, yeah. The, the battery in the camper gets charged up as the car uh, basically runs. runs. We put a new starter motor on, because being an automatic car without a starter motor, you're not going anywhere. And we went for a drive out to the Carnarvon Gorge and... Um, <laughs> we're sort of 200 k's from anywhere and the starter motor started to fail. So we had a 500 kilometer drive to get a new starter motor. 
in uh, Emerald we had to drive to to get a new starter motor. So Toyota in Emerald were fantastic. We phoned them the next day they had us in, new starter motor on. Although they didn't take me bash plates up. Um, and also we put in a slightly larger alternator. Um, because we're charging the battery at the back, plus we're running the um, with the spotlights and the winch could be using, um, draws a lot of juice. So the alternator that was on again was the original and it was, it was starting to fail. Since we've put it on, when it charges the camper, uh, we get about 38 to yeah. 40 amps yeah. going to the camper. Yeah. The snorkel um, was fitted when, I bought the when we bought the car brand new, we got it fitted. Um, it's still the original airbox. It's never let us down. We've had water. I know I've had water to there on more than one occasion. The splash, I mean, you mean? No, I mean we were we were in water to this depth. Oh, that was with my mum and my sister and, and Alice in it. Remember? And that was when it was standard. <laughs> yes. Um, well, that was on Stradi, right? It was, yes, yeah. yeah. The centre lakes, yeah. yeah. We went down a wrong track, didn't we? Yes. Oh, and my lovely three-inch three inch King Brown stainless steel front to back exhaust just to get the hot air out of the engine again. As again, has made a difference. A little bit of a fuel saving and certainly a bit more power. Um, suspension, we've done a Lovells, Lovells um, three and a half ton GVM. 3.3. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's set as a three and a half. Yeah. Um, but on this car, we could only get 3.3. We've got um, constant three and a half, 3,500 kilo leaf springs. And then I've, we've put airbags in just to assist. Because we put the GVM upgrade on, it lifted the car about two inches two and a half inches, which put the CVs on an angle. So we put a diff drop in, so that makes the CVs nice and straight and takes any stress off them, because when they're on an angle, obviously they're not as strong as when they're straight. We've put in upper control arms, um, just so we could get a better um, adjustment on the wheel alignment and tracking top there, put the name of them. Left the tow bar on at the back. Yeah. Um, here's, a, here's a recovery point basically. Um, we just have a hitch that we drop in there. Um, because if I didn't have that, I'd have to put something else on to make recovery points. So that might as well stay there. Mm -hmm. Also braces the chassis. Keeps the chassis together. Mm -hmm. Because of the weight on the back, my concern, obviously, you see a lot of um, lot of youths carrying canopies breaking in this area. Underneath? Um, we've got fat bar armour, bash plates, full length. Right underneath the transfer box. Fat bar. Rock sliders, they are the super strong, we bounce the car off, rocks on those, no bother at all. Um, also, putting this top plate in, apart from just being a step, it actually stops the stones coming up between the bars and in the underneath the sill, protects it really well. Um, we've put on BFG, KO2s, can't fault them, done 15,000 Ks on them, they look brand new, um, haven't let us down, the only thing I can say, they are all terrain so once you're in any mud, you're on slicks, it's good fun. <laughs> Fuel tank, um, we've put a 140 litres, I think it's 150 litres Frontera, Frontera long range fuel tank in. ARB? From ARB, yeah. 
is we get about 1100, 1150, maybe 1200 on, on good runs. And then off road in low range, we get about 700. We've put a spoiler on. And a lot of people seem to want to take the piss out of it, but I guarantee you it's saving me around 10% fuel on motorways. Once you're above 80 k's an hour, it's saving you money. Um, you can feel the deceleration is much slower when you take your foot off the gas. And in headwinds, carrying this camper, you need it. That's why all the trucks put them on. One 10,000 pound winch. 10,000 kilos. kilos. Yeah. I hope it's not pounds. No, it's 10 ton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, solar spotlights, which are superb. I like those particularly because they have a dimmer inside the cab that can dim the headlights down. You know, it stops you getting the, the reflection off the um, traffic signs, etc. But distance wise, a thousand meters, no problem. Which is great. And it scares the shit out of the kangaroos and the clear off before you get there. Oh, cam extended mirrors on. Yeah. Why did you choose those? Price. Yeah. And size. Yeah. Um, I forgot the other make, but they're just it's too wide big. on this. It's like elephants' big. ears. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And those one can can yeah. be pulled back as well if we wanted to. If we were doing something. Yeah. All right. So inside the car, we've put in a, a scan gauge too. Just so I can monitor water temperatures, transfer oil temperature, the air intake temperature and the voltmeter. Just to keep an eye on all those four systems. If they vary massively or I know straight away something's wrong, I can check it. Also that'll give us, if it pulls up any codes, any fault codes, we can clear them with the scan gauge. I also carry an OB2, OBD2 mate. Um, the only difference between them is the newer one you have to monitor it on your phone which I don't like to do and the OBD mate tells you what the fault is actually relating to whereas the scan gauge you have to go onto the internet to check what your code is saying is wrong with the car all right, we've got a reversing camera, constant rear view mirror camera mounted. Um, very you, useful. Very useful and the wife fitted it so it was not too difficult. <laughs> um, we've got uh, a Polaris, we just fitted this. Again, Christine's done this because she's really good at electronics. Um, Feed the Polaris uh, flat screen thing. Um, we're still working how to use it, but it seems pretty good. And it's certainly at one thing, it's improved the sound of the radio and the, uh, and the music in the car. We haven't changed the speakers or anything, and it, yeah, the equalizer on it has improved the sound. It's, it's really good. Um, plus, you know, maps, um, anything else we're on there, Billy Goat and all that stuff. Little fire extinguisher down here. So I can get it quick. CPS uh, tire pressure monitor. Um, yeah, it was a gift. It's good. I can't read it. I can't see the, the digits on it. Um, I hear the alarm go off if the pressures go high or low. So that's all I need to know. Oricom um, dual um, channel. So it can monitor two channels at once, generally on 10 and 40. Um, so that you can actually be talking to your mates, but also monitoring your general area. In the back, we have built a temporary uh, structure. Christine has built a temporary structure that when we can take the back seat out, that drops straight in, gives a hell of a lot more storage room. It's only a temporary uh, solution in that when we go home, we take the camper off, we put the back seats back in, and it's back to an ordinary ute. That's the great thing about this canopy. 
you just jack it off. Yep. Put my sides on and I've got a full full yoke so you yep. can carry a ton. So obviously you are also to carry all the electronic equipment. What we have done, we've created a little box here with four USB plug and those plugs are connected back to the camper so I can have it on at all time. We're not going to run the risk to be stranded because we've got a flat battery. Here, very accessible. I've got all my gear for my drones, uh, iPad, uh, all the, the charging charging pods for everything, which makes life much easier. At the back, it is our pantry. Uh, so I've got two front runner box. This can be used as well as a platform when I'm doing all my video editing. At the back we've put a net where we can throw in all of our jumpers. On here we've got uh, obviously our first aid kit, the recovery box. I've also added a light. This light is linked to uh, the pod at the back so I'm not going to drain the battery from the car. So on this side here uh, all, all we've done is put a uh, very light uh, metal box um, we can put the chainsaw when we probably go to camp cape york we'll take a little electric chainsaw with us uh, we've got the platform here i've screwed the platform into directly into the the the, the seat uh, anchor point in there so that platform don't go anywhere at all and we've got the portable um, compressor in here you can see this gives us really much more room than having just just the seat there, which which is really, really good. All the way in the canopy, sits in this quarter. Nothing of any weight is behind this wheel. Um, we've got two water tanks in the canopy, which is 140 litres. That lasts us for showers. We can have a shower a day each and drink for probably 10 days. We can live on that. Kitchen is very box standard kitchen, uh, Tommy Camper or Dynamic Engineering fitted that all for us. Um, what I've just done, and this is really all about the little, little things which makes a difference, right, when you are camping. It's just recently I've just added, you know, this uh, washing line there. And as you can see, we've been immediately starting to use it. Inside here, as I said, very, very box standard. Uh, not much I've added here. I've bring back uh, the inverter here so we can power the um, our our kettle directly from there I've got all the switch box here actually my switch for the electronic inside the car in here so I can turn that off as well if I want to at the back we've got our instant hot shower it's a gas uh, key cast system not super happy with it it's a lot of messing around to set it up you've got to uh, connect the gas uh, connect the water from the uh, from the inlet and the pump the pump is behind here and then you have to uh, connect the hose um, and, and run it all the way to where the tent is to get the shower um, so it doesn't work very well for us um, I think uh, when that system uh, start, stop working we will move to probably an electric system, which will be plugged into, uh, into our uh, battery system there. So inside uh, the camper, uh, we haven't done that much inside. We've got the bench in here, um, and then the bed, of course. Uh, we also got some, some drawers. That was all fitted by, uh, by Tommy Camper. Inside the drawers here, I have got those uh, box from IKEA, which are actually working perfectly. It's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle. On this side, a, a little working area when I do some editing and if it's raining outside, I can then just pull this table and now that becomes my little desk. Uh, and I sit on the bench at the back here. So that works out very, very well. Um, and in here, I can store my laptop if I wanted to. This area was where the table uh, was fitted by, by Tommy Camper. We absolutely hated it. It was not working. We could never put it out. Uh, it was an absolute nightmare. A lot of people likes it. We absolutely 
didn't. <laughs> so essentially we removed it. So now to the side, uh, to the side of the tummy, it's really our storage area. Uh, we've got a, uh, an additional freezer. I've made this platform here. Uh, again, it's all about the little things, right? And what that allows me to do is to really store the very thin and fragile item, like for example, the, the foldable solar panel. That allows us to store that underneath and being able to drag them out without having to empty uh, the whole side um, to, to, to reach the item that we want. Also added uh, some little um, brackets here so I can use that whole area as well. Um, just added a pipe on the back there, drain pipe, just to put fishing rods any straight tent poles or anything like that we can pop in there because it's quite awkward to get out of the way it's great good little addition um, just mounted on a single roof rack mm -hmm. there. so in terms of electric uh, we do have as you can see at the back uh, DC to DC uh, converter uh, it's an inner drive system allows us as well to connect the camper uh, to the main um, when we are at home. 200 amps uh, lithium ion batteries which are in the box just down there. Above this uh, we've got a 2000 watt inverter. That has been very useful uh, as we uh, are using an electric kettle to make a lot of cup of tea. Remember that Keith is English, so he needs his cup of tea. Having the solar panel on the roof is great. However, if you are camping and it's really hot and the sun is very, very strong, you probably want to find somewhere in the shade to, to park. You are hiding your, your solar, solar panel from the sun, so you are not using it to really charge your battery. A good compromise here was to get some uh, portable panels with a very long lead. I've got a 10 meter lead so I can really go and set those panels away from the car to harvest the sun. We use the little uh, solar converter here that I've directly plugged into the battery system and it seems to work a treat. All right, and this concludes uh, our little video on uh, our nice tour. We are now all ready and set to go to Cape York. See you during our trip to Cape York. See you soon. Catch you later.